नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत संबुद्ध सो टुडे वी विल बी टेकिंग सुता फ्रॉम अंगोत्रा निकाय दिस इज ए सुता वेर ए ले पर्सन हैज आस्ट द बुद्धा अबाउट हाउ टू लिव द लाइफ of a lay person when uh, you are a lay person and uh, you are living a normal life uh, then how do you live your life uh, this is uh, angutra nikaya uh, book of 11 and this sutta is i think 11 i i may have mentioned it uh, incorrectly as 1 but this uh, is 11 not 11 angutra nikaya so i'll update that uh, uh, in my later uh, when i give an update on this talk but uh, this talk is kind of very uh, uh, kind of informative because there are certain things uh, there are certain aspects which are not discussed in the normal uh, uh, circles so we will be kind of uh, kind of seeing how the buddha is seeing certain aspects and uh, how he is advising the lay people so this is a time of uh, rains retreat so i'll just tell you about the rains retreat uh, uh, the buddha was vidha uh, had asked his monks to kind of go around and teach to everybody and uh, 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 they were going uh, non stop all year round uh, from one village to another village and uh, they were teaching now in the time of the buddha the, uh, the roads were all uh, mud roads when it, it would rain and the uh, monks would walk Uh, the, uh, the there was a kind of a, a theory in the time of the uh, india that if you walk on uh, soft soil you harm the beings which are there living under the soil so uh, they did not uh, kind of mind uh, walking on the hard soil and uh, uh, but they had a kind of a theory that if you walked on soft soil after the rain then it would kind of uh, harm so that is the reason Uh, buddha said that uh, for three months uh, in the rains time uh, the monks will not travel and stay at one place and they were given some exceptions for movement like uh, they can uh, go from one place to another uh, for a seven days leave and they have to come back in the those seven days within that seven days period so those are the kind of thing and one other thing is that uh, after some time the day people wanted to kind of gift uh, uh, robes to the monks uh, the cloth was very kind of scarce at that time so buddha allowed them to gift uh, clothes and that clothes gifting is kind of mentioned over here why right? they are saying that this is the uh, uh, after the rain retreat they are they are stitching a uh, robe for the buddha that means that after the uh, robe has been stitched buddha will start traveling so before that he wanted to kind of meet the buddha so i'll just start reading so uh, book of uh, 11 11 mahanama on one occasion the blessed one was dwelling among the sakyans at kapilavastu in the tree park now on that occasion a number of bhikkhus were uh, making a robe for the blessed one thinking that with this robe completed at the end of the three months of the rains residence the blessed one would set out wandering so they are kind of expecting him to start traveling Mahanama the Sakyan heard about this approached the blessed one paid homage to him sat down at to one side and said to him bante i have heard a number of bhikkhus are making a robe for the blessed one thinking that with this with, with his robe completed at the end of the three months of the rains residence the blessed one will set out wandering bante with all our various engagement how should we dwell so what is he asking is that we are busy people we have various engagements in our life so with all those engagements which we have how do we uh, live our life good good mahanama it is fitting for you 
uh, clansmen to approach the Tathagata and ask Bhante with all our various engagement, how should we dwell? So Buddha was happy with that question which was put to him. Uh, Mahanama, a person with faith succeeds, not one without faith. Now, uh, this faith is not uh, in something uh, which is uh, considered to be a, in a person or a system or a belief uh, uh, that one has faith. One has faith in the process of cause and effect. That is what the Buddha says in uh, one other place that uh, his teaching can be summed up in a way that says that if this is there, that will come to be. If this arises, that arises. If this uh, does not come to be, that does not come to be. If this does not arise, that does not arise. That means that he is uh, telling about whatever his teaching is there on cause and effect. It is based on that. So the faith is there in the uh, faculty of cause and effect one person has. An energetic person succeeds, not one who is lazy. So you have to have some, uh, whatever you do, you put some energy into your uh, activities. But this is also a factor in the uh, Sattva Bojanga, the seven uh, uh, factors of enlightenment. Energy is also one of the factors. One with mindfulness established succeeds, not one who is muddle-minded. That means that how uh, uh, one puts our attention to what he puts the attention to, he is aware. So the definition given by Bhante Vimal uh, Gamsi is that uh, you remember to observe how the mind's movements uh, moves from one thing to another and how this is an impersonal process. That means that in life also you are aware that where you are putting your uh, attention and how it is changing. Modern mind it means that you are not aware and you are just following whatever uh, emotions come up, whatever thoughts come up and you are following that. And you will re recognize that mindfulness is also part of the seven factors of enlightenment. One who is concentrated succeed, not one who is unconcentrated. We like to say one who is collected uh, succeeds, not one who is uncollected. Collect uh, collection, collectedness of mind means that he is able to put his attention at one point and all his fact faculties kind of come and uh, rest on that uh, aspect which you are putting your attention to. So one should be uh, not scattered around and uh, thinking and doing a lot of things, but have to be focused in what uh, they want to do. One who is wise succeed, not one who is unwise. So uh, Bhante Vemaramsi also says that uh, wisdom means that one understands the dependent origination. What is dependent origination means that one is uh, one aspect is related to another aspect and in that same way everything happens. So in life also one realizes that every action has a reaction and how he can uh, be uh, aware of whatever is happening in his life. That has to be understood by a person who is uh, a lay person who is doing uh, uh, the things in life. Having established oneself in these five qualities, you should further develop six things. That means that these five are the basics and there are certain things one can develop. Here, Mahanama, you should recollect the Tathagata thus. The Blessed One is an Arahant, perfectly enlightened, accomplished in true knowledge and conduct, fortunate knower of the world, unsurpassed trainer of persons to be tamed. Now, this... Uh, a sentence which is that unsurpassed trainer or person to be tamed is that a person should be willing to learn. This is not a teaching where you can just uh, tell somebody who is uninterested and they can kind of uh, gain something. You have to kind of personally uh, put your attention to the uh, teaching which is being given. That is called giving ear. So if you are a person to be tamed, then Buddha is the supreme trainer who is unsurpassed in how he conveys the information. And through that information, you will gain insights and uh, know how your, the mind's uh, attention moves and how it is impersonal and how it is uh, uh, impermanent and how you create your own Dukkha. So those things you will be able to know if you are willing to learn the training. Teacher of Devas and humans. So over here, 
uh, it is pointing out that even uh, in Deva Loka, people can uh, learn because <coughs> it is kind of sometimes considered that uh, when uh, uh, the Buddha is teaching, only a human body is required for one to gain insights. And uh, they put down uh, the uh, being reborn in a Deva Loka. But uh, over here we know, we can see that he's saying that he is a teacher of Devas and human beings, that people who are there in the other realms also have access. Not uh, all the realms, uh, if you are in a mental realm, that is the Arupa Jana, uh, if you are there in Arupa Jana and you attain uh, to that uh, level, then it is not possible because there is no body uh, over there and only a mind state. So that is the only uh, place where you cannot, but generally going to heaven is not considered bad. So whenever uh, somebody says that that is considered to be a bad aspect, you should understand that uh, there is an aspect of learning which is possible. What uh, 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 prevents somebody is that if a person has done some good uh, things like uh, give charity, he has uh, had very good sila, he uh, follows the five precepts, then he's reborn in that world and he gains so much pleasure, then he is muddle-minded, he does not have mindfulness. And then he uh, spends his time in the pleasure and uh, a kind of consuming that pleasure. But one who has a Buddha's teaching, when he's born in the Deva realms, he has some mindfulness. So even if he has not reached, uh, say, uh, uh, a higher uh, uh, level of, uh, say, even if he's a stream enterer, then uh, also he can go in a Deva realm and kind of progress from there. So that is what uh, uh, this uh, kind of has to be uh, known, that it is not considered a bad to be in a Deva, uh, Deva realms. The enlightened one, the blessed one. So they are uh, talking about the uh, Itipi, so they are the good qualities of the Buddha, Dhamma and Sangha. So there will, there will be other uh, explanation of the, the Dhamma and the Sangha. So when a noble disciple, uh, disciple recollects the Tathagata, on that occasion, his mind is not obsessed by lust, hatred, and delusion. Lust is I want, hatred is I, I, I don't want, delusion is I am this. So whatever thought comes, you say, this is my thought. Or, uh, but you, you have to just recognize that that thought arises, but it is not a personal thought. On that occasion, his mind is simply straight based on the Tathagata. Means when he is recollecting Tathagata, he has a pure mind. The noble disciple whose mind is straight gains inspiration in the meaning, gains inspiration in Dhamma, gains joy connected with Dhamma. So what happens is when uh, a noble di di disciple uh, mind is uh, straight means his mind is joyful. His, uh, his mind is uh, clear, then he is able to gauge the meaning of what is being uh, taught to him and gains inspiration. So if he has inspiration, he will put uh, more time, his more efforts in the things which he is doing, gains joy connected with the Dhamma. So he has joy arise because of the Dhamma. When he is joyful, rapture arises. So when he is joyful, he has more joy come up. On one, uh, for one with a rapturous mind, the body becomes tranquil, and one when tranquil body feels pleasure. So he has a pleasure, a pleasurable abiding when he is recollecting the qualities of the uh, Buddha. For one feeling pleasure, the mind becomes concentrated or collected. The mind becomes collected. This is called a noble disciple who dwells in balance amid an unbalanced population who dwells unafflicted amid an afflicted population. As one who has entered the stream of the Dhamma, he develops recollection of the Buddha. So when uh, you recollect the uh, good qualities of the Buddha, then you are balanced. When uh, 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 others are kind of uh, unbalanced, you will feel balanced. Unafflicted means that when the others are in pain, you will not feel that pain. Again, Mahanama, you should recollect the Dhamma thus. The Dhamma is well expounded by the Blessed One. That means that when the Dhamma is being taught, though those things which have been taught, the suttas which you are uh, uh, teaching you, they are well uh, 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 
taught. They have been uh, taught in a way that somebody can listen and understand that directly visible. So it is you can with your own uh, effort, like when you are sitting in the meditation, you can directly see what is happening. Immediate, immediate uh, has a uh, very kind of many people kind of uh, give the different kinds of explanation of immediate. But in this immediate means that uh, when you uh, in Samyutta Nikaya, it has been explained. So let's say when you are going into a meditation, you put your attention on an object of meditation. Okay. So you know uh, that your mind has been distracted. That is the first step. You recognize. You recognize your mind is distracted. Then you release, you relax. So now the recognition that your mind is distracted is the immediate effect of the meditation because you immediately know what is unwholesome. You are, you are in an unwholesome state. That is, you are having a thought which is not connected to your object of meditation. If you are, if you are in meditation and your mind is uh, tranquil, then you know that your mind is tranquil. That is what you immediately know when you are doing meditation. So you don't need time to understand that there is a wholesome state of mind and there is an uh, unwholesome state of mind. So you are immediately kind of get gaining insight into the uh, aspect of the mind's working when you are starting the uh, uh, starting sitting for the training. So there is no uh, time gap. There is immediately you are able to recognize that. Inviting one to come and see. So when one experiences something uh, like uh, in the retreat, uh, one of our uh, students who is here was kind of happy. And then he invited others to see, come and see uh, how this is working. So because this is a, a process and it is a transparent method of uh, doing a, a activity, others come and see this. They are in, uh, uh, excited to kind of invite others and to uh, ask them to look at what is happening. Applicable to be personally experienced by the wise. So when a person uh, does the meditation only, then he can experience this. If a person does not do this meditation and just reads about it, then he is not able to kind of gain insight into what is happening. When he actually does it, then it has a different kind of effect on that person. So that is the second, uh, that is the most important thing when the Buddha is giving the Dhamma. The Dhamma is uh, to be experienced personally by the wise. When a noble disciple recollects the Dhamma, on that occasion his mind is not obsessed by lust, hatred or delusion. On that occasion his mind is simply straight based on the Dhamma. A noble disciple whose mind is straight gains inspiration in the meaning, gains inspiration in the Dhamma, gains joy connected with the Dhamma. When he is joyful, rapture arises. For one with a rapturous mind, the body becomes tranquil. One tranquil in body feels pleasure. For one feeling pleasure, the mind becomes collected. This is called a noble disciple who dwells in balance amid an unbalanced population, who dwells and uh, afflicted amid an afflicted population. As one who has entered the stream of the Dhamma, he develops recollection of the Dhamma. Again, Mahanama, you should recollect the Sangha thus. The Sangha of the Blessed One's disciple is practice, practicing the good way, practicing the straight way, practicing the true way, practicing the proper way. That is the four pairs of persons, the eight types of individuals. Now over here, the four pairs of persons are Sotapanna, uh, Sakdagami, Anagami, Arahant. And why are they pairs? Because there are two stages of the awakening. One is Sotapanna path, the other is Sotapanna fruition. So uh, in certain uh, kind of uh, groups, there are uh, considered to be uh, only four kinds of uh, individuals. That is a Sotapanna, a Sakdagami, Anagami and Arhan. So they kind of disregard or ignore the path. So there are eight kinds of individuals. So this, over here, he, uh, Buddha is kind of clearly explaining what, how many kinds of people are there and how, what are the stages of the path is also revealed in this statement.
this sangha of the blessed ones disciple is worthy of gifts worthy of hospitality worthy of offerings worthy of reverential salutation the unsurp uh, unsurpassed field of merit for the world now this uh, sentence the, the meaning that uh, they are the unsurpassed field of merit for the world means that when uh, a person is giving a uh, a gift a dana there are the buddha ranks them in uh, the return one uh, can expect from the giving of generosity so if you are giving to an animal you can uh, uh, expect 100 times the return if you are giving to a lay person you can uh, uh, expect a thousand times uh, the uh, return if you are giving to a person uh, who is uh, good in conduct and who has who attains jnanas but they are not uh, uh, buddha's teaching but they uh, the one pointed concentrated jnana if you give to them you get 100000 times uh, of the uh, returns if a, a, a person is uh, a arya uh, even if he is a sotapanna uh, uh, path or a fruition they, they get unlimited amount now this there are uh, after this uh, all the stages the buddha says is you get unlimited merit but the merit uh, uh, unlimited means that there is a pond you cannot calculate the amount of uh, drops of water in that pond and then there is a bigger uh, lake you will not be able to kind of uh, uh, count the uh, droplets but there it is it is a little more over there if then there is a uh, say sea it has more and then there is a ocean it will have more uh, drops of uh, or uh, drops of water but all are uncountable so uh, in this path uh, if the buddha uh, comes uh when the buddha was kind of given a gift by her mother uh, he said that you have to give it to the sangha because you get more merit to give to the sangha than a living buddha so that is the reason this line is uh, talking about the sangha that when you are giving uh, any gift to even a monk who is uh, not following the path he is he is a householder he wears a, 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 a bra means a saffron uh, scarf and uh, works in a field but even to that person if you give with a mind of giving to the sangha you get the benefit of the merit which is for the sangha so this is a kind of uh, kind of pointing out that when you are giving to a sangha uh, with a mind to give to the sangha the sangha is the unsurpassed field of merit when a noble disciple recollects a sangha on that occasion his mind is not obsessed by lust hatred or delusion on that occasion his mind is simply straight based on the sangha a noble disciple whose mind is straight gains inspiration in the meaning gains inspiration in the dhamma gains joy connected with the dhamma when he is joyful rapture arises for one with a rapturous mind the body becomes tranquil one tranquil in body feels pleasure for one feeling pleasure the mind becomes concentrated this is called a noble disciple who dwells in balance amid an unbalanced population who dwells unafflicted um, uh, amid a afflicted population as one who has entered the stream of the dhamma he develops recollection of the sangha now one thing interesting about uh, this uh, recollection of buddha dhamma sangha is that there are many places in the suttas in samyutta nikaya angutra nikaya and i think uh, other places they, it has been mentioned that if a person follows the five precepts and uh, regularly re recollects the uh, uh, buddha dhamma sangha in a proper manner which we had explained just now then he can expect himself to be a stream winner and uh, uh, he can uh, one, of, one of the sutras uh, uh, buddha says that you can even declare yourself as a stream winner because that uh, kind of changes your mind and outlook on seeing on many of the aspects in life so this is a kind of a powerful uh, statement the buddha is making and you keep your precepts because bante vimal gamsi also uh, again and again will kind of uh, say you have to keep your precepts you have to keep your precepts when we are at a retreat also we take the precepts every day and that is the reason see if you break your precepts then you have to take the precepts and uh, resolve 
with, uh, uh, means with yourself that you will not break them again and then continue but not have any guilt don't uh, kind of blame yourself or don't have a mind which is saying that uh, why did i do it and uh, i i am a bad person don't, don't kind of uh, uh, have this negative stream of thought just realize that this is happening because of your habitual tendencies you recognize it you release it you relax yourself smile take the precepts once again and continue so the uh, uh, taking of precepts and recollecting has a powerful effect on people again mahanama you should recollect your own virtuous behavior this is shila this is the five precepts virtuous behavior as unbroken flawless unblemished unblotched freeing uh, freeing free means it, it leads to uh, being a sotapara then thus uh, freeing you from the cycle of samsara praised by the wise ungrasped leading to collectedness when a noble disciple recollects his virtuous behavior on that occasion his mind is not obsessed by lust hatred or delusion on that occasion his mind is simply straight based on uh, virtuous behavior a noble disciple whose mind is straight gains inspiration in the meaning gains inspiration in the dhamma gains joy connected with dhamma when he is joyful rapture arises for one with a rapturous mind the body becomes tranquil one tranquil in body feels pleasure for one feeling pleasure the mind becomes concentrated this is called a noble disciple who dwells in balance amid a unbalanced population who dwells unafflicted among an afflicted population as one who has entered the stream of the dhamma he develops recollection of virtuous behaviors so in the same way virtuous behavior is important the the shila uh, which you are following that is important that is what is being explained in this sutta again mahanama you should recollect your your, your own gener generosity thus it is truly my good fortune and gain that in a population obsessed by stain of miserliness i dwell at home with a mind devoid of the stain of miserliness freely generous open handed delighting in relinquishment devoted to charity delighting in giving and sharing when a noble disciple recollects his generosity on that occasion his mind is not obsessed by lust hatred or delusion on that occasion his mind is simply straight so in this thing <coughs> it is kind of explaining one thing which is kind of curious about uh, generosity about dana Uh, because there is a philosophy which is there in uh, india which is saying that when you do generosity you do, do it in a way that you are putting those that thing into the ocean you are throwing it away in the ocean so if you are giving somebody something you should not uh, think about it any any more but the buddha is saying that see if you are doing something wholesome you have to recollect that if, even if it is a shila if you are keeping your precepts recollect and uh, think about that how uh, well you are keeping your precepts if you are doing dana recollect of how you are giving the dana and how it is making you feel good about uh, be doing the right thing following the uh, buddha's advice and being generous and all the uh, 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 thing which was mentioned that uh, when 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 we are giving we are not stingy we are not having a mind which are tight so we are being generous in our way of doing this thing so that is the reason one has to be uh, careful about uh, 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 latching on to any kind of uh, philosophical uh, explanation which one uh, kind of gains from the normal day to uh, day life and uh, kind of uh, understand the process from the point of view of the buddha and how he is kind of pointing you directing you to how use your attention in a manner that leads you towards the goal so buddha in one of the sutras in majjhima nikaya 19 says that he uh, splits all his thoughts into two aspects one aspect is which leads him to the path and forwards him to the goal and the second is what takes him away from the path or takes him away from the goal so these are the two things that the buddha is kind of 
uh, asking you to uh, understand that when he is uh, teaching you, he is teaching you how to reach the goal. So this is also uh, a part of your attention. This is also a part of your meditation. That how you are putting your attention on the things which you have done. If you have done good things, put your attention on good things. If you have done uh, the, them, then more and more you will reinforce it. Don't kind of uh, think about the things which you have done bad. You put your attention on uh, your generosity, on your uh, uh, keeping uh, of uh, the virtuous behavior, and then that will grow. So wherever you put your attention, the attention which you put is the food for that thing. So uh, that is the reason forgiveness meditation is so important. And that is the reason when, when something you are doing, uh, which is not in line with the Dhamma, then you recognize that, you release it, you relax yourself, then you smile and then you take your precepts once again and keep on going. But do not blame yourself or be in that game that I may not be worthy of it or I am, I am, I am to be... But think about the times when you did uh, follow the precept. Think about the time that you could have lied and but you did not lie. Think about the times when you could have had uh, talks uh, 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 like bad things about somebody, but you did not do it. Think about the times that you could have uh, uh, got or stole something, but you did not do it. So those kind of things uh, kind of reinforces your good behavior. So when you are doing a good behavior, reinforce them by thinking about it and put your attention on wholesome things. So this is a kind of important teaching which we are getting. And what happens when you do this? Mind is simply straight based on generosity. A noble disciple whose mind is straight gains inspiration in the meaning, gains inspiration in the Dhamma, gains joy connected with the Dhamma. When he is joyful, rapture arises. For one with a rapturous mind, the body becomes tranquil. One tranquil in body feels pleasure. For one feeling pleasure, the mind becomes collected. This is called a noble disciple who dwells in balance, amid an unbalanced population, who dwells unafflicted, amid an afflicted population. As one who has entered the stream of the Dhamma, he develops recollection of generosity. Again, Mahanama, you should recollect the deities. This is kind of a, a thing which you have to kind of uh, uh, hold your horses and listen to the whole thing. Then I will uh, explain because this is an important uh, aspect. Again, uh, Mahanama, you should recollect the deities thus. There are devas ruled by the four great kings. Tavatimsa devas, Yama devas, Tusita devas, devas who delight in <coughs> creation. Devas who control what is created by others. Devas of Brahma's company. And they were still higher than these. There exists in me too such faith as those de deities possessed because of which when they passed away from here, they were reborn over there. So over here, uh, it is an important aspect that devas are not an entity which are something different from us. Whatever we were or whatever we are, are because of whatever we have done in the past. So that is the reason we are here as we are. Whatever pleasures we have, whatever uh, difficulties we have are a result of a cause and effect pattern which has got us over here. But we have a, a faculty of volition. That means that we can choose where we can put our attention on. So those devas who are there are just people like us who did the right thing, who followed the right path, and then they reached uh, that uh, level of position in life, which is uh, giving them uh, pleasure in the measures of their status in different different realms, which they are uh, staying. So what are the things we'll see? There exists in me to such faith as those deities possessed because of which when they passed away here, they were reborn there. There exists in me such be virtuous behavior, that is sila, keeping the five precepts, such learning, such generosity, such wisdom as those deities possess because of which when they passed away here, they were reborn there. When a noble disciple recollects the faith, virtuous behavior, 
learning, generosity, and wisdom in himself and in those deities. On that occasion, his mind is not obsessed by lust, hatred, and or delusion. On that occasion, his mind is simply straight, based on the deities. A noble disciple whose mind is straight gains inspiration in the meaning, gains inspiration in the Dhamma, gains joy connected with the Dhamma. When he is joyful, rapture arises for one who is rapturous mind. The body becomes tranquil. One tranquil in body feels pleasure. For one feeling pleasure, the mind becomes concentrated. This is called a noble disciple who dwells in balance amid an unbalanced population, who dwells unafflicted amid an afflicted population. As one who has entered the stream of Dhamma, he develops recollection of the deities. So now we see that all those aspects which the Buddha was talking about previously, he is talking about those aspects which will lead you to a better life and also to a realization of the Dhamma, the enter, entering into the stream of Dhamma, which uh, Buddha is mentioning again and again, is the possibility of you becoming a Sotapanna. And when you are a Sotapanna, then uh, you have a maximum of seven lifetimes. And these lifetimes can be as a Deva also. You can be reborn uh, in a Deva Loka and then subsequently reborn in different Deva Lokas till you attain uh, fruition or Arahanthood and be uh, free from the cycle of the samsara. So these are the uh, kind of uh, teaching which is given for the lay person. Like it starts uh, from the practical aspects of the mind. But those are also connected with our meditation. Whatever we are see teaching in the meditation are those aspects which you can follow. And that is the reason uh, Bhante Vimal Ramsi, when he wrote a book, the book was said that meditation is life and life is meditation. So the aspect currently uh, in the society is that you separate two things. Here the, there is life and here there is meditation. What we do over here is for this uh, world and what we do over here is for this world. But the Buddha is saying that these are all intertwined. So what you are doing in meditation is the same aspects which you are using in life. And when you are doing uh, whatever activities, you need mindfulness, you need uh, the collectedness of mind to do uh, your activities. You have to put your uh, attention on the wholesome uh, things. As we say in the meditation where we are putting your attention on metta, karuna, mudita, upekha. When uh, there is metta, we uh, share the metta to all. When there is uh, 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 karuna, we sp uh, uh, spread karuna to all. When there is mudita, we spread mudita to all. When we have upekha, we spread upekha to all. So this is an aspect uh, which we do of generosity in meditation. So in life also, whatever we have, we share with others. And that uh, is as, as, as for our uh, whatever uh, ability, we can do uh, those things and ensure that you have energy. Whatever you do, you have to put energy into that. Even in the seven uh, uh, factors of awakening, the aspect of energy has been mentioned. So that aspect of energy is that you have to kind of put an effort uh, in whatever you are doing in life. So these are the uh, uh, things the Buddha has told for the lay persons. And now I will open this uh, forum for questions. So uh, do you have any questions? Was it too clear? <laughs> And one other aspect is there is a lot of repetition. Uh, Buddha, uh, the Bhante also says that there is a reason for the repetition because Buddha wants uh, the aspects or the concepts to kind of be ingrained in our way of thinking. So that's the reason the repetition is important. And, and that's the reason we want to, uh, whenever possible, kind of do all the repetition. So any questions? Yes, yes. Somewhere uh, it was told that uh, you yourself can declare Srotapanna second, keep the precepts perfect. Uh, something, some sentence was there. I would like yeah, to yeah. know. That is related to uh, uh, the suttas uh, where Buddha is mentioning that if you keep your precepts, 
well and you are uh, recollecting the Buddha Dhamma Sangha, the way which was mentioned over here in this Sushrutta or Ethipiso, uh, just not uh, repeating it or chanting it. It is not about the chant chanting, but it is about recollecting those aspects and looking at it, questioning it, thinking about it. Those aspects when a person is doing, when he is recollecting the Buddha, the, when he is recollecting the Dhamma, when he is recollecting the Sangha, and he is doing it in a proper manner, which has been mentioned over here. He kind of gains insight. And when he gains insight, he can transcend the samsaric cycle and become a stream enterer. So that is, uh, and Buddha is so confident saying that if you are doing this, you don't need anybody to declare you a Sotapanna. You can yourself declare yourself as a Sotapanna. So that is what the Buddha is saying that it is not. Uh, dependent on a, a monk, he is not dependent on a guru, it is not dependent on uh, some uh, high priest uh, for you to kind of gain uh, uh, awakening uh, or the path of awakening. So uh, no, not all those aspects are required. What is required is your ability to be able to interact and your ability to kind of be able to look at things and analyze those things. And when you are able to look at those things, analyze those things and keep your uh, actions, which are uh, pure. One monk uh, explained this in this way. And there is also a sutras where uh, this simile has been given that there is a water. Okay. And there is a lot of mud in the water because the water has been splashed around. Somebody has come and was splashing around in the water and he went away and there was a lot of mud in the water. So the person who came after that, they was not able to see what is there in the bottom. There were beautiful fishes and there were plants, beautiful plants in the lake, but they were, he was not able to see. Then he sat down there for uh, some time and slowly the mud and everything uh, went down. And then he was able to see, see the uh, bed of the, uh, the pond and we were able to see the beautiful fish and was able to see the things which are there. So the aspect is that if you are breaking the precepts, you are mudding your mind. You are like in a, a beautiful lake, you are muddy, uh, mudding around and you are mudding your mind and you are unable to see the aspects which are important to grow in the life. And when you are uh, keeping your precept, a precept, you are uh, making sure that your mind gets calm and collected. And by that time, you are able to get gain insights. So there is, then these insights does not require a monk, that does not require a priest. It requires your own commitment to doing the right thing. So if you are doing the right thing, you will be able to say or realize for yourself that you are entered the street. I'm only watching the mental factors, whatever the mud you said. Yes. I'm, I'm watching only the mental factors which are arising along with the yes. consciousness and uh, they are arising and passing away like that yeah so okay. whenever you recognize you release if your mind is there on the unwholesome you relax you re-smile you come back to a wholesome aspect and you repeat only when it is needed you just okay. keep on going and it will automatically happen there is nobody required to declare you you can uh, realize for yourself and you will be able to progress so this aspect of the teaching is universal. It is the people who do it can achieve it. There is no, no uh, kind of labels required for you. There's no kind of blessings required. There are no kind of uh, special initiations required. Only it is your commitment, which is required to do the right thing. But please repeat the Bhante's uh, precautions, something he said. You said in at the time of uh, speaking about yeah, so uh, Bhante's precautions is saying that always follow the precepts because uh, following the precepts is the major uh, aspect in any kind of meditation or life. Is there any other question? <laughs> yes, yes. Hello, Bandit. Thank you for your talk. Um, yes. Earlier on that uh, faith was related to understanding of cause and effect. Uh, is this uh, uh, understanding from uh, an intellectual point of view or understanding from observation? In other words, seeing the aspect of dependent origination. Yeah, with observation. 
you have to first understand uh, that this is a concept that if you are uh, having faith that this will work then you will uh, give ear when you give ear you have uh, an increase in faith when you have increase in faith you uh, put that what you have learned into practice when you put what has learned into practice you see when you see your faith again grows when you grow uh, your faith grows then you will put more effort in your practice when you are putting more effort in your practice then again you kind of grow okay so it is a kind of a uh, virtuous cycle which goes on and on and on but if you are a person who has skeptical then he can come uh, with a, a mind of uh, uh, investigation so like a scientist who will be there uh, who you want to investigate he comes to investigate because he wants to investigate he gives ear he gives ear means he puts his uh, attention to the teaching when he gives ear he Uh, gains knowledge when he gains knowledge he has enough uh, uh, knowledge to practice when he practice he gains faith again again he comes to the uh, aspect of having confidence in the uh, practice when he has confidence in the practice he will do a little more practice and he'll uh, investigate more and then again the virtuous cycle starts so you come from an aspect of faith or you come from an aspect of uh, investigation it will kind of take you forward ultimately because the practice will give faith in the teaching okay thank you any other questions any uh, meditation related or other aspects also you can ask any point uh, you have to clarify or nothing okay then i think we are uh, 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 less than 1 hour so this is a good uh, session to be put on the youtube so we will uh, share okay madhusudan no just i just say short and sweet okay short <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> okay and we also send uh, a metta uh, if whenever possible to bante uh, these are the times when uh, we require all your uh, kind of uh, good wishes uh, so we hope that uh, he is uh, well and uh, he continues to kind of teach us uh, 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 mata ji sister kema she kind of uh, continues to uh, be with us and teach uh, with us so send uh, your good wishes sometimes uh, there are the difficult times so all of us uh, have to kind of uh, have faith in the process that uh, when uh, bhante says that if you uh, do work for the dhamma then dhamma kind of take care of you so you take care of the dhamma and the dhamma take care of you so have that faith that when you are doing something good good happens and uh, uh, share your uh, merits uh, with pante and send him a loving kindness and hopefully uh, he will be back uh, in his zoom meetings and uh, retreats and uh, we will be having many more years of his company so i would uh, on that note i would like to share the merit and uh, then uh, we will kind of uh, in our own time whenever possible share uh, our uh, metta with bante okay so we'll all share the merit may suffering once be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be may the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief may all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness may beings inhabiting space and earth devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours may they long protect the buddha's dispensation sadhu sadhu sadhu